progress. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you our research innovation, which is the development of a neonatal biobank. You'll know that the majority of child death is unfortunately neonatal and that limited translational and mechanistic research occurs, partly because of sample challenges due to the limited volumes that we're allowed to take and also the unpredictable nature of onset of disease. So our approach is to set up a salvage study, which meant that we took everything that would otherwise go in a bin. But from the nappy, we take stool and urine, we keep all suction samples, all residual breast milk and feeding tubes, and any residual blood, or if a baby goes to theatre, any tissue the pathologist doesn't need. Initially, we set up a proof of principle study, the service study, which was a success, and we then converted that to a standard neonatal biobank. We now hold more than 10,000 stools and more than 3,000 blood, milk and urine samples has been a great success. We have more than 900 infants longitudinally sampled or with parental consent. And every sample is associated with highly detailed clinical data. We have cohorts of healthy and diseased infants and have samples from after discharge. We've used these to support many PhDs and MDs and establish global collaborations, all with parental involvement. I'd just like to thank the Tiny Lives charity who supported the initial study and all of the Tiny Lives that have contributed samples to the Biobank. Thank you. Hello, I am Josephine Najemendia, a PhD student at the University of Oxford. At the height of COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, research activities and some healthcare services were halted. This meant face-to-face -face neurodevelopmental assessment of children born preterm could not be carried out. With the support of my supervisors, Professor Stephen Kennedy and Dr. Frances O'Brien, I have innovatively converted the face-to-face -face NDA to a virtual platform so that children could be assessed remotely in the familiar environment of their home. Within a period of six months, over 100 children and parents have benefited from the virtual NDA and children with developmental impairment have been identified. Parents have shared positive feedback about the virtual NDA and provided recommendations for improvement. This virtual NDA has therefore ensured that children have not missed out on standardized NDA despite the pandemic. This methodology could make it possible for children to be assessed where access to hospital is not possible or where resources are limited. I'd like to acknowledge the general support of my college advisor, Professor Charles Rua, Oxford University Hospital NICU team, Intergrowth 21st, and the families who have been involved in this study. I'm truly grateful to BAPM for the opportunity to present my work. Thank you.